Hi everyone, I'm Zhong Yu. I'm going to present our work where we develop a CoachPad robot that can lead a visually impaired person via a leash to safely navigate in narrow environments. We call this robot a robotic guide dog. This is a teamwork with Anxin, Wenzhe, Li Zhi, Jun, and me, and we are advised by Koshio. So first of all, why we need a robotic guide dog? Let me show you some numbers. Training guide dogs is both time and labor intensive with the process not easily scalable. It takes about 20 months in the UK to train from a puppy to a guide dog. In addition, the skills from one dog cannot be transferred to another one, and only 40% of the trained puppies are qualified to serve as guide dogs. As you may expect it, training a qualified guide dog is very expensive, and it costs around $50k in US for the guide dog school, and around $1k per year for daily expenses. But if we use a coach by robot to serve as a robotic guide dog, the algorithms developed on one robot can be easily transferred to another one. Therefore, we can mass produce robotic guide dogs to serve more people who need a guide. And having a coach by robot is quite affordable these days. It takes about $10K to buy one and just needs to be recharged every day. Moreover, the biggest advantage of using a robot is that we can enable a robot with sort of intelligence, such as safe navigation autonomy and speech communications to better serve visual impaired persons. There are already previous endeavors to develop robotic guiding systems, and there are two major types. First one is using a mobile robot to provide the human with physical assistance and active guidance. Another one is to use robotic cam to help the visual impaired person to detect the surroundings and to navigate. However, most of the previous work used rigid robot arm to lead the human, and this has a drawback, that is, the system can get stuck in narrow spaces. As you may notice that most of the previous work only showed the ability to lead a person in some open spaces. Therefore, in this paper, we want to address this problem by introducing a leash. Here is our system. We use a coach pad robot that is a mini cheetah. This dynamic robot is able to perform algebra maneuvers with small footprints. Moreover, it's morphologically similar to a puppy. Thus, and thus make it more welcome in the human community. We build a sensor kit on top of it. It had the RGBD camera to detect the human being led, a 2D growth field and gimbal to follow the human by rotation and the pitching. We also have a 2D LiDAR to do mapping, localization, and to detect obstacles. There is also an onboard computer to process the real-time data. In this system, we first introduce a leash to lead the human, and the leash can be either slack or taut. And we have a force sensor at the end of the leash to measure the intactive force. This clip shows the advantage of using a leash. The robot is leading a blindfolded person to navigate in narrow space. When the system is getting stuck, the robot will let the leash go slack. And since there's no tension in the leash, the robot, the human will stop moving. At this mode, the robot can reposition and reorient itself to find a better configuration to lead human to pass through this narrow space without collision. And now we are going to introduce how this guide autonomy work with the leash. Here's the outline of the talk today. We firstly develop and validate a hybrid model to describe the dynamics between the human and the robot while using a guide leash, which could be either slack or taut. I think this is one of the first hybrid physical human robot interaction model in this scenario. This hybrid model is then utilized in an organization-based local planner to enable the robot to lead human while avoiding obstacles. And in the last part, we built up one of the first end-to-end -end robotic guide autonomy using the coach by robot to lead blindfolded persons to safely navigate through narrow spaces. Let's introduce modeling first. We describe the robot leading human system in the 2D world frame. The robot has its position and the turning yaw. The human being led has his or her positions. The robot using a leash to guide the human, so the leash has its own lens and its orientation with respect to the robot. We can assume that human will always hold the leash. Therefore, the human position can be represented by only the system states, which include the robot 2D position XY, turning your theta, the leash angle phi, and the leash, end, leash lens L. We also define the robot frame attached to the robot body. Then we can define the robot velocity in the, robot, in the, in the body frame. Since the leash can go either slack or taut, this makes the robot leading human system hybrid. The virtual input to this system includes the robot velocity and the turning your rate. 
when the leash is taut, there is an internal force in the leash. We assume that the human will move along the leash direction while the leash length keeps being fixed. When the leash goes slack, the leash length is varied below the original, and we assume that human won't move because there's no tension in the leash. The mode will switch from slack to taut when the robot is moving away from the human while the impacting force is larger than a certain threshold. And if the robot and the human are approaching to each other or the leash force is below the threshold, the leash will go slack again. However, both of these models are built based on some assumptions, but are they true? We validate these models by experiments. We firstly let the human operator to control the robot to lead blindfolded person in order to always keep the leash in the taut mode. We use the proposed dynamics in the taut mode to predict robot and human trajectories. This is the robot pass. The light yellow line is matched robot position, which is the ground truth, while the dark yellow is the predicted robot position by the model. This is the human pass. The light blue is the ground truth human position, and the dark blue is a predicted human position. And we did a lot of these similar experiments, and the proposed taut mode dynamics shows reasonably good prediction accuracy for both human and the robot. Therefore, we can feel safe to assume that the dynamics of the taut mode is correct. What about slack mode dynamics? This is the matched force in the leash during another robot leading human experiments, and this is the matched human speed. As you can see that when the intact force drops below the threshold, which is 12 Newton shown in the dash line, the human tend to stop, stop moving, such as from 40 seconds to 60 seconds, where the speed of the human is below 0.05 meter per second. Therefore, the assumption that human won't move if the force is near zero can work well in the slack mode dynamics during the experiments. Once we obtain such hybrid physical HRI model, we can utilize this in an organization-based local planner to enable the robot to lead the human to reach the given waypoints while avoiding obstacles. This is the system at the current state. The robot and the human have their own dimensions. We want to move the system to the target state. Therefore, we formulate a collocation-based mixed integer organization problem where we want to minimize the distance between the final node to the target node while having small virtual inputs. And we want to subject it to the initial state conditions and we enforce the hybrid dynamics we just developed via collocations. And we also, have, we also enforce the states and the input bounds. By solving these problems, we can have the trajectories for both robot and human to approach to the, to the given waypoints. And this local planner can be embedded to an end-to-end -end robotic guide dogs framework. This is a framework we developed for this work. Firstly, after being given a goal location, we use an A-star serving as a global planner to quickly find the path of the configuration for the entire system. It will output the next waypoint to the local planner to check. This local planner is what we just introduced using the hybrid physical HRI model, and it will output the virtual inputs to the system, which are the desired robot walking and the turning yours velocity. These commands are sent to a pre-built velocity checking controller for the mini Cheetah. And online, we use a 2D LiDAR to detect obstacles and to do localizations. And we have an RGBD camera to detect the human being led, and this camera is able to move by a 2D gimbal to always keep the person in the wheel. This, this human following system will update the human position in the real time. Now we introduce our experiment results. We deployed the algorithm on the mini cheetah and let it to lead blindfolded persons via a leash. After selected, goal locations, the global planner generates a path for the entire system, and the planned path for the human is shown here, which is a green line. The, the match of the human is marked as a yellow cylinder, and the robot current positions is marked as a blue box. When the robot leading human system, system enters the narrow spaces, using the local planner and the hybrid physical HRI model, the robot will let the leash go slack because the system cannot pass through this space while the leash being taught. Humans then stop because there's no force in the leash and no information from the outside. At this time, the robot can reposition and reorientate itself to find a better configuration by the local planner. And then the robot will lead, let the leash go taut again to inform the human to move with it in order to travel through this space. We also test the system starting from different initial poles. 
Such thought slack switching may happen many times during the navigation. The tightest space in this experiment setup is about one meter, while the human robot separation is about 1.6 meter when the leash is taut. We also test and validated our system on multiple human subjects without training or teaching the human how to use the robot. In conclusion, we first developed a hybrid model to capture the dynamic relationship in the system of the robot leading human with the leash to and validate this by preliminary experiments. This hybrid model is then utilized in an opposition based local planner to optimize for a trajectory for the robot to lead the human to safely reach the target position while taking advantage of the start slack switching of the leash. And according to the best of our knowledge, we built up one of the first end-to-end -end robotic guide dog autonomy with a leash. We showed a advantage of this system by enabling the robot to lead the blindfolded persons through the narrow spaces. We also showed the potential to outperform guide dogs by using coachified robots in terms of autonomous navigation. Our work is also featured by lots of media because they think this work may bring benefits to the visually impaired community and to the entire society. And there are some guide dog schools show great interest to collaborate with us. We will continue to push this project forward. In the future, we want to add a speech interface on the robot and to enable the robot to operate elevators for the human being led. Okay, this is all the material that I want to share. Thank you.